This summer, on August 21st, an amazing spectacle will occur over a swath of the United States and other parts of the world. These places are along the path of where viewers can witness the full effect of a total solar eclipse. Associate Professor of Physics and Astronomy Mike Pierce shares details. What is a solar eclipse? The solar eclipse occurs when the moon passes directly along the line of sight from someplace on the earth towards the sun so that it covers up the sun's bright uh, atmosphere that we see every day completely. And are there different types of them? There are different types. Um, there are partial solar eclipses when the moon covers part of the sun, sometimes even most of the sun, but still leaves like a little sliver and um, there are also eclipses called annular eclipses when the moon is too far away to fully cover the sun. So it, it looks smaller from the earth and so it leaves a little ring and that's called an annular eclipse. And which is the most common type of eclipse? Well, the most common would be the partial eclipse mm -hmm. because over the most of the earth you can see the moon partially uh, covering the sun. But solar eclipses are very rare. It requires just you being in exactly the right place at the right time for, that, uh, for the sun to be fully covered. Okay. Yeah. We have a total solar eclipse coming this summer. Can you tell me a little bit about how rare that is and you know, what this means? Yeah, yeah. So um, eclipses somewhere on the Earth, total solar eclipses, occur once or twice a year. Um, but because everything is in motion, that is, the Earth is turning, the Moon's going around, and the Moon's orbit is inclined you know, to the Earth's orbit, we don't get an eclipse every time the Moon is new when it's going through its phases. So most of the time, from any given place, like in Wyoming, the Moon is like above the Sun or below the Sun, just simply the alignment is missed. But uh, the last time there was an eclipse, um, total solar eclipse in Wyoming was about a hundred years ago. And in fact, um, uh, Thomas Edison actually came out to Wyoming to see that eclipse. So it's kind of well known, you know, that he was a visitor then. Yeah. What does a solar eclipse look like if you're directly under it? Well, if you're directly in the path of totality, that means that the bright uh, sun light that streams to Earth gets completely covered. So we're in the shadow caused by the moon. And so what you see is kind of a ring around the sun. It's, kind of, it's called the corona, which is, I think, Greek for crown, because it looks uh, very cloud-like and uh, filamentary, and um, it's uh, quite the experience, because uh, the only time you can see the corona is during the eclipse. And it's um, something that you'll tell your grandkids about. So if you're in other parts, if you're not in that line of totality, what does it look like? Do you even know that anything's really going on? No, it's very hard to tell. Because um, even though the sun is um, theoretically getting darker, um, your eyes just adapt and you hardly notice that the sun's being eclipsed at all. But along the path itself, uh, there are all these phenomena that occurs. It, of course, gets dark. It's, um, it's about the darkness of twilight, like when the moon is out. So you can still see, but it gets, it's quite dark. Um, animals react. Uh, birds will roost. Uh, they'll start their chirping and all of, all of that as they are going to sleep. Uh, and then, of course, they wake back up or, or come, become active again when the eclipse is over. Yeah. So how does the state of Wyoming and Casper specifically fit into this summer's eclipse? Well, there's, as, as you can imagine, there's a lot of excitement building up. People are getting uh, quite excited about this because it's so rare. And you probably also are aware that it only lasts a couple of minutes, two and a half minutes in Wyoming, in fact. Um, and so the path goes right over Casper. And uh, Wyoming is a popular spot because um, being in August, it's expected that the weather will be extremely good. Because there are people flying from all over the world to come and see this. And um, if um, you come and it's cloudy and two and a half minutes go by and you miss the eclipse, that's it. Yeah, chance of a lifetime is gone. 
So um, Wyoming is very interesting to a lot of people, and so they're coming from all over the world. How many people are expected to come from around the world? Well, it's uncertain, but the best estimates are about uh, 500,000 people will come to Wyoming to see the eclipse. Um, so the population will roughly double. I think Casper is expecting roughly 30,000 people. So their population will double and they are expecting a number of events, uh, or they're, excuse me, they're planning a number of events uh, the week before. And um, so there's a lot of interest all across Wyoming. Is Casper ready for that amount of people? Uh, I hope so. I've been to some planning sessions mm -hmm. and I think the Chamber of Commerce and other businesses and first responders and other people um, are very aware of the event and the Wyoming Tourist Bureau is also involved in helping communities to organize um, and be prepared for this big influx of people. Okay. So tell me a little bit about the projects that you're working on um, for the week of the eclipse or, you know, that day. Yes. Um, so I'm part of a NASA-funded project where we plan to deploy uh, about 55, 56 telescopes across the United States because the path of totality will begin in Oregon and go through Wyoming, of course and then exit uh, on the Atlantic coast in South Carolina. And so the pl our plan is to deploy telescopes about every 50 miles or so, so that each telescope records two and a half minutes of the eclipse, and then we'll splice it all together to make kind of a time-lapse movie uh, showing the structure of the outer atmosphere of the sun and how it changes over the 90 minutes that we'll get by splicing all of that together. And it's, it's exciting because we're making use of the internet. Uh, this is the first time the internet's really been available, at least in the US, for a major event like this. And we're involving um, uh, about 50 uh, high schools across the country. So we're gonna be training, um, I think I'm training eight uh, high schools in Wyoming to help us with the project and then they get to keep the equipment at the end of, of the eclipse. So tell me where you're going to be watching the eclipse. Well, I'm going to be in Casper on, uh, at the Girl Scout camp, uh, Camp Sacagawea, up on uh, Casper Mountain. They've invited uh, my group to, to be there. And um, we'll probably travel down to downtown Casper, perhaps um, Casper College, to set up uh, one of the stations there with um, uh, a group that's coming up from Phoenix um, associated with the Exploratorium uh, Science Museum and they want to provide a live feed of the eclipse, li live video feed of the eclipse uh, to their people back in Phoenix. And are there any safety concerns for there, the solar eclipse? There, there is a safety concern and that and first and foremost uh, you don't want to uh, look at the Sun uh, with the naked eye during the partial phases when the moon is partially covering the sun and uh, the sun is still quite bright. Once the totality begins and it gets dark, and this happens in just seconds, so it's very obvious, uh, it's perfectly safe to look at the sun. There's nothing different about the sun during the eclipse, so even as uh, the moon starts to reveal the bright sun again, all you have to do is look away, so it's totally safe. Can you wear sunglasses and be looking? You can. There are special glasses um, that you can order online. Uh, they're called eclipse glasses. And I recommend that um, if you want to look directly at the sun, that you only do so with some safety-approved um, devices like those eclipse glasses. You can also project the sun's image through what's called like a pinhole camera. You can have like a card and put some aluminum foil on it and punch a little hole in it and then let the sunlight come through and it will form an image of the sun. So you can see the image uh, of the sun partially eclipsed. And then of course that's totally safe. Well, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me.